Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you my final verdict on Canon's new 70 to 200 millimeter F4L IS USM Mark II lens. Now, of course, Canon is doing a refresh of both uh, versions of the 70 to 200 millimeter, which have been very, very popular particularly in the case of the f2.8 version. And if you missed my first look at this lens, I detailed where, kind of where these lenses are coming from, in my opinion, and uh, why some of these key updates are being made to them at this particular point in time. And so if you're interested in my theory on what's going on in Canon's head, I would encourage you to take a look at that episode. But of course, as a part of what Canon has done, they have taken what was already a very, very nice lens in terms of its physical construction, and they have improved that yet further to where this lens um, really does set itself apart uh, from you know consumer grade lenses in terms of having a professional grade build, great um, weather sealing internally. It's physically, it's very, very nice done. And of course it has Canon's new shade of paint. And so if that matters to you, then <laughs> pull out your wallet. Fortunately, Unfortunately, beyond that, there are other reasons for existence. And so, um, as a part of this, while the physical dimensions haven't changed a whole lot, the biggest thing that has changed is up front. We've gone from a 67 millimeter to a 72 millimeter uh, front filter thread and a correspondingly slightly larger front element as a part of that. Now, um, External element surfaces are covered with a fluorine, which allows them to be, you know, fingerprint and uh, water repellent. And it also makes them a little bit tougher to scratch, easier to clean. And so as a byproduct of that, just so you know, one thing that I find as a plus, if a lens has a fluorine coating, I feel a lot less um, needful to throw a protection filter on there personally, because I feel like part of that is already being covered by that external coating. And so far, I've not regretted that decision. I find that sometimes even with good filters, you do introduce some extra um, you know, flare issues maybe when the sun's in the frame, you know, just, and so adding that extra bit of glass is, if, if you don't have to do it, then it certainly has some net positives. And so anyway, uh, that's been part of what I have, um, I've done with, with lenses like this. Now, uh, as far as the, uh, the switches on it, it still has four switches. Uh, they have added a third stabilizer mode to this. And so you have more options for controlling the, um, the IS in it, image stabilization. And so now you have a mode for kind of your standard mode for you know, doing as much to stabilize the viewfinder. And it works better than it ever has before. It comes on more smoothly. It's much quieter in operation. And beyond that, it's more effective. Now, when the original um, F4L IS came out, it actually had a top of the class at that point in time um, rated at four stops of stabilization. And it was very, very effective. I got, I remember getting shots that were very crisp with, you know, one tenth, one fifteenth of a second. And that was, you know, revolutionary at the time. And so uh, great, great performance there. Um, it's improved even more so to five rated stops of image stabilization. Beyond that, of course, the system that is used for rating lenses has changed during that time. And so it's, it's even actually a little bit more of an improvement than what that, uh, that one stop would suggest. And so a very effective image stabil stabilizer. In mode two, you know, you've got a panning specific mode. And so if you're moving, you know, in this axis, it's not trying to stabilize on both axes, just the one that's going to help you to get a smooth panning type result. And then in the mode three, it's for if you're kind of following, you know, more er erratic action or you don't really want it trying to grab and stabilize the viewfinder. You more just want as good of stabilization on your shot as possible. And, uh, and it's a very effective mode most of the time. Um, but so you have, you have options depending on what your needs are there. Uh, as far as the autofocus goes, I, I haven't really covered that in detail yet. So I'm going to just pause and look at that for a couple of minutes here. Uh, one thing that I was delighted by is that I got great autofocus accuracy, focus accuracy right out of the box. 
As I noted in that first episode, this lens actually works a lot better than the previous version when it comes to working in live view type mode or in AF servo performance. The focus is much smoother and quieter without that constant hunting that a lot of USN lenses do, you know, and that noise where it's just constantly moving back and forth. You can tell that Canon has optimized, it's still a USM motor, but its algorithms, its behavior has been tweaked to suit kind of modern needs. Um, and so where you don't, don't just need as quick a speed as possible, you also need smoothness in certain situations. And this lens is a definite improvement when it comes to that. And so, you know, quieter, smoother in operation. And, and I found that makes it a better lens for video work as well, if you're doing video AF servo work. And so um, byproduct of that is just a lot of basic improvements on that front as well. And so positives there. Uh, I also found that the lens autofocused well and accurately putting on a 1.4 times extender on there. Now I don't own Canon's two times extender. I'm not a huge fan of two times extenders. I just feel like with most lenses, most of the time, there's too much of a price to pay uh, when it comes to uh, throwing that on there. So it's just not worth it to me. Um, I would prefer to, you know, do an extra bit of crop maybe if, if necessary. But this lens behaves very well with the 1.4 times extender on there. It autofocuses fine. Uh, I didn't seem to introduce any extra uh, hunting or pulsing. And so um, certainly a positive performance there. I did note on a, a few occasions I might get uh, when trying to focus on a, a close subject in AF servo mode, I did sometimes get a little bit of a hesitation to focus on a nearer object. Um, you know, that does happen sometimes, but for the most part, autofocus was excellent with the lens. On that note, by the way, I did use it uh, quite extensively actually with um, a Sigma MC11 on a uh, Sony a7R Mark III body and found performance there actually to be pretty good. Uh, it was certainly very usable. I was using it in an event setting. And so um, even using it in servo AF on, on a um, uh, Sony body that's AFC mode. And so I was actually able fairly successfully um, at some of the, the most demanding moments I didn't track as well. But for the most part, it, it tracked fine. It kept up with continual autofocus. And, um, you know, autofocus results, if not as exceptional as on a Canon body, were really uh, quite good. There was a few times, and this kind of happens a lot of times with adapted lenses, where inexplicably autofocus would just stop. You know, you, you just wouldn't get it to even try to attempt focus. Fortunately, those moments were fairly rare and, you know, usually, say, for example, toggling the AF, MF switch on and off. Um, is all it takes to get things moving again. And I don't know why that happens sometimes, but it does. And so um, anyway, but all in all, it was that was also a favorable performance. Now, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to take a look at this detailed episode where I break down the image quality and I compare it to competitors uh, like the uh, Tamron 70 to 210 millimeter f4 VC, a, another new lens in this uh, focal length. I also compare it to the Tamron 70 to 200 f2.8 G2 lens, and and so that's worth taking a look at to get this information I'm about to give you in greater detail. But uh, in terms of the actual performance of this, this lens, uh, optically, the lens it is replacing was already very, very good. Um, it was considered to be the best um, zoom lens of its time, better even than the f2.8 version from Canon at that point. And of course, Canon, after that, released the Mark II of its f2.8 LIS lens. And so, you know, it helped to bridge that gap somewhat. But this was already an optically excellent lens. And while there are some minor improvements to image quality, um, image quality is not necessarily significantly better. It is better in some ways, however. And, uh, you know, in an absolute sense, it's very, very, very good. And so I found, uh, you know, just kind of recapping that episode, I found that through, say, about 150 millimeters, 70 to 150 millimeters, that the Canon and the Tamron were fairly similar in performance. The Canon was a little bit better at the edges, extreme edges in particular, like the extreme corners, but um, not hugely different. When you got to the telephoto end, however, it was a different story, where the Canon was, um, without a question, better. And when stopping the lenses 
down, the Canon just got better still. And so it delivers a really fantastic performance at what I would say is the most crucial focal length um, in this focus range at 200 millimeters, which of course allows it to perform pretty well with extenders. And I found that while there is a little bit of a hit, it's not quite as sharp. It was still quite sharp with the uh, 1.4 extender attached, which, you know, extends the usefulness of the lens. And so I found a lot of detailed images, some of these images of birds, for example, um, or squirrels, you can see that there's still great, great um, detail that's there in the feathers or the fur. And, and so even with the extender on there, it does a really good job. But one thing that it has is near perfect uh, chromatic aberration control. There is very, very little either lateral or axial chromatic aberration. Byproduct of that is you have fantastic contrast right out of the box, um, wide open. You also have very, very good color rendition. Bottom line is that the images that come out of this lens look great. And um, I found color rendition was really, really nice. I really liked the look of the images that I produced uh, with the lens during the time. And so I would say that it definitely beats the F4 lens from uh, Tamron in absolute optical performance. One area where the exact opposite of what I expected happened, and that was I mentioned in my first episode on this lens that I kind of expected because of the fact that the front element um, had grown a little bit, that light transmission would be improved. And maybe it was over the previous Canon version, but surprisingly, it was actually the Tamron that had a better um, light transmission when I compared them head to head. And that, that really surprised me. That's not the uh, outcome that I expected. And so, um, Anyway, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of an advantage when it comes to a vignette over the previous. I don't know, but it wasn't as significant as what I anticipated. And so anyway, uh, that's one area where I felt like the, uh, the Tamron did a little bit better job. Of course, minimum focus has been improved here. Maximum magnification has been improved. It's now very useful, 0.27 times. Tamron still tops it because it can focus down a hair closer. And of course, it has an extra 10 millimeters of focal length. Um, and so the Tamron is the class leader here, but this is an extremely useful figure and a nice gain over what was, I believe, a 0.21 times magnification of the previous generation lens. And so uh, that just further extends the usefulness. The bokeh quality is really quite nice from this lens. You will get some, you know, as is almost always the case, some geometric distortion along the edges and the bokeh highlights. They become a little bit cat-eyed, but, um, you know, no real concerns there. Bokeh quality, I found, was, was quite nice. With the extender on there, you know, in some transition areas, areas you'll get a little bit more harder edges on there, but it's still, it's still nice. I mean, I, I have no hesitations over recommending using the extender when it comes to the image quality as well. And so uh, plus is there. Um, the one area where I did find, you know, maybe an optical imperfection, not a big one, was that the lens does veil some when the sun is in the frame. And so you'll get a little bit of a loss of contrast and kind of that um, like kind of warm glow if the sun's in the frame or a bright light uh, source. Uh, ghosting wasn't too bad, however, so, you know, it kind of washes out in some ways. Now, the one thing I do want to detail as I kind of transition into my wrap up here is that I didn't just compare it to the Tamron F4 lens. I also compared it to the Tamron F2.8 lens. And yes, the Tamron G2 lens, it's bigger, it is larger, but what it's not is more expensive. The fact that this uh, Canon lens comes at a price point of $12.99 means that on price, it doesn't compete with the F4 competitor from the third party it actually competes with the F2.8 competitor from the third party. And the Tamron G2 lens is just as good as this lens at F2.8 as this lens is as at F4. And when you stop the Tamron down to F4, it shows not massive advantages, but minor advantages um, at a number of places across the, the focal range. And so, I mean, there are reasons to buy an F4 lens. It's smaller, it's lighter, as I've mentioned, if portability is a priority to you. I mean, that is certainly a reason to choose that over the F2.8 lens. But if your you know, kind of greatest reason for not choosing an F2.8 lens is over price, 
Well, the Tamron has, you know, a similar degree of build, similar degree of weather sealing. It's got all similar features and it lets in twice as much light. And so if that is important to you, it's a consideration uh, certainly to, you know, take under advisement here that that may be the competing lens that you need to consider as an alternative. If you're not, don't want a bigger, heavier lens, however, I would say very safely that this is probably the best 70 to 200 millimeter f4 lens that you can buy right now. It's an excellent lens, and while some of the advantages um, progression is incremental rather than um, you know revolutionary, it still has taken a good lens and made it even better. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you look in the description down below, you can find a linkage to my full written review. Also, I've got an image gallery with lots of images, including images with the uh, shot on Sony and with the extender. And so if you want to see those, you can take a look there. Um, you can also find buying links if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. And of course, buying through my links, it doesn't cost you anything, but it helps to keep this channel going. So thanks to all of you that do use my links. You can also follow me on social media, sign up for my newsletter, become a patron. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.